My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Ugly my friends, I'm just trying to save you some money. My job, not just to entertain, but to educate, explain what's going on. So call me 1 800 743 CBC. Tweet me at Jim Kramer. Wall Street is addicted to trading. It's just. But if you're managing your own money, you should not be listening to all this trading advice. You can't afford to do what they want you to do because trading is a full time job. Even many hedge funds can't do it because trading is a real hard way to make money. Trust me, I did it for 14 years. They were lucrative, but they were miserable. See, Wall Street never stops the trading stuff, though, especially on a day like today. Dow tumbling 399 points, S&P sinking 0.96%, NASDAQ plunging 1.18%. Today, well, we had a ridiculous plethora of sell-side downgrades. I want to go over some of the worst defenders because I believe they are truly hazardous to your wealth long term. If they could be right for two, three, maybe five days. Look, I, I get that today was definitely ugly. Long-term interest rates were higher. Again, oil keeps climbing. All that creates a level of calamity that merits some negative commentary, no doubt. I won't pretend that today should have been a good session, not for a minute. But I want to talk about how bad days like this one bring out the downgrades and then magnify them. And those downgrades can really hurt anyone who's trying to be a long-term investor because they're giving short-term trading advice without couching it that way. Let me give you some of the more egregious examples I saw just in this one day. First downgrade, Amazon by Wells Fargo, titled, quote, Positive revision story on pause, reducing to equal weight, end quote. Totally get it. Lots of headwinds. Stocks up huge from the so-called bad quarter when Amazon fell from 184 to 161. Since then, it's traded as high as 195. But as 186 as of last week, I, I, it's, it's time to sell. I'm not so sure. What do these analysts fear? Amazon spending a lot on a ton of initiatives. Worries about Walmart impact. So there's a slight estimate cut, too. Wait a second, I say. How many times... How many times has Amazon been up against headwinds? Do you know how many times the company's made some inexplicable moves? This is nothing new. Yet Amazon has always come back. It's in their culture. It's in their DNA. It always does. I remember a year and a half ago when I was screaming at them because Amazon Web Services was underperforming. It came right back. Last time I reported, I was in disbelief that the Olympics and the attempted assassination of Donald Trump led to a light third quarter sales guy. I was apoplectic at the Alexa losses. And what happens? Comes right back. Comes right back. So I say, knock yourself out and see it. sell it if you have to. Let me ask you, did you sell Amazon at 161 after that last supposedly bad quarter? How did it feel when the stock then bounced to 195? Once again, I think it's just a matter of time before Amazon bounces back, as usual. No hurry. Stock does seem to be headed lower. I'm no doubt about that. I get it. But sell to buy it lower? Can you really get back in that? Too hard. How about Jeffries downgrading Apple this morning? This piece certainly seemed cogent. Listen to this, quote, we like Apple intelligence long term as Apple is the only hardware software integrated player that can leverage proprietary data to offer low cost personalized AI services. End quote. So far, so good, right? Then, though, quick pivot to the negative. Quote, smartphone hardware needs rework before being capable of serious AI with likely timeline of 2026 to 2027. End quote. 2026 to 2027? Jeffries claims the high expectations for the iPhone 16 and 17 are premature, and the price earnings multiple is near an all-time high. And you know what? That's all true. Apple really is facing some near-term headwinds. The hardware may not be ready. But all this tells me is that everyone else, what everybody else has been saying for weeks now, real issues for the 16. When everyone knows there are real issues, though, you're going to have a limited window to buy the stock after the expected post-quarter weakness. Unless you believe that nothing good will happen until 2026, 2027. To which I say, if you believe that story, 26, if you believe that, it means that you think Tim Cook's authorizing the sale of phones that he knows are substandard. It's almost as though the entire history of Apple refusing to issue hardware before its time never happened. I mean, it's like you can't trust the guy. I say that's some Joseph Stalin-level revisionist history for you. This downgrade is betting against Apple's entire culture of excellence. Even when they argue that the valuation is too high, that presumes Apple's service revenue stream, gross margin bonanza, will somehow taper off. I don't buy it. Oh, and by the way, let's remember the Chinese government finally training the bazooka on their flailing economy. It looks like their consumers will get some free money. That's huge because Apple's got a ton of exposure to China. Hey, by the way, with all the talk about the iPhone 16 disappointing, does it matter that T-Mobile, one of the biggest sellers of the thing, told me personally that sales are good? I think it should matter. So what are you supposed to do? Sell Apple 2026, buy it back at 209 when it misses the quarter? I don't know. Is that the game plan? No change from my stance. I say own it, don't trade it. Too hard otherwise. How about DuPont? 
Barclays has disliked this story all the way up. It's Chapel Trust name. Carrying it. Well, I wrote about this morning for our, our top 10, if you get that. It's a really terrific newsletter put on every single morning. It's free. Why does Barclays do this? Why did they downgrade it? Well, it took it to sell after a real nice run that you wouldn't have caught a penny of if you listened to the analysts. You'd be selling it right now before the three-way breakup masterminded by Chairman Ed Breen, one of the greatest breakup artists to ever play the game. Seems crazy to me, but I guess Barclays feels that Breen doesn't know what he's doing. I wouldn't take that bet. I say buy DuPont and Luigi's. We are on for the Chapel Trust. So far, we've been right. Analysts, he's been wrong. And there's America's Best. This morning, J.P. Morgan downgrades the stock from buy and hold. Marcus Press, they say, quote, represents the asymmetric risk associated with a stock trading near the high end of its valuation range with limited upside to estimates, end quote. So they say go elsewhere. Do you know how many times Amex has been downgraded, gotten right off the canvas a few days later? Do you know how many times it's bounced back almost immediately? This is the premium global credit card company in the world, and you're downgrading ahead of a rate-cutting cycle? How about some history for heaven's sake? I say if you sell it at 276, I hope you can get back in, I don't know, 264? If it reports to so-so quarter, maybe you can do that? You might leave it, but you may never get back in. And therefore, you might miss a much bigger bevy of points, which is what I'm worried about. Finally, there's a piece by Barclays downgrading Netflix on slowing growth and margin erosion, both of which makes this premium valuation hard to justify. This one made me feel so agreed that we got a whole piece on it later tonight. Look, it's not like I'm saying go against the downgrades of one of the weakest banks like Comerica that I saw today. You can take that to a sell. I'm right there with you. I get that you might want to downgrade some home builders because of the weakness in Florida and Texas. There are a real surplus of, of homes right now in Florida. So even though history says you shouldn't downgrade the home builders in rate cycle, I get it. I'm not going to fight this one. Home prices are coming down in some parts of the country, so gross margins will be hurt, and that does knock down these stocks. But when I look at the history of this incredible bull market, and it has been an incredible bull market, it is littered with buy to hold, hold to sell, buy to hold, hold to sell. These downgrades that scare you out of amazing stocks at levels that may temporarily be too high, but will recover later. If you listen to the downgrade, though, you'll never recover with it. And that's what I care about. Bottom line, if it weren't for the steady downgrades of Apple, can you imagine how, many, how much money you would have made over the years? Or Amazon. I mean, if you just ignore the bearish analysts, how much money, how much more money you would have made? At least no one said sell NVIDIA. But you know what? I bet after a day like today, that's just a matter of time. Gary Massachusetts is Gary. Oh, yeah, Jim. Hey, I love oh, you, yeah, Gary. Thank you, buddy. Listen, uh, today I'm calling about RTX, right? I took a small yeah. position, Jim, last December. Since then, I've added to the position four times. I'm at a 30 per si- I'm sorry, 36% gain. Now, I acquired RTX for diversification. There's lots of things I like about this. But, Jim, it's at an all-time high and had a beat for the last four quarters. But, Jim, the analysts are not supporting the company at this time. And it keeps going up. Oh, well, right. the analysts don't understand the company as well as you do. See, that's the problem, Gary. you got a better beat on the analysts. It only sells at 22 times earnings. It did hit an all-time high today. But you know what? It's not expensive. It's got a 2% yield. Here's what I would do. I mean, if you feel so inclined, you can, you can try to cut the position back a little if it's too big for you. But otherwise, you hold on. It's a winner. And there's nothing, nothing there that shows me that it won't continue to be so. Paul in Minnesota. Paul. Kramer, you bald-headed beauty. I got thank a you question for, for you. I've been Let me get my wife on the phone for just a second. Me- I've been buying SoFi from nine and a half dollars down to six and a quarter. I'm sitting on thirty thousand shares. I look at this as a, a home run hit and a twenty five dollars stock, but it doesn't move. Am I naive, ignorant, no. or just no. fatally no, optimistic? No, you're, you are uh, baffled, as many people are, because it's more of a technology stock. But people regarding it as a rate stock, there are people who genuinely hate this company and it has a very big short position. But how many times have I asked Anthony Noto to come on and defend it? And every time he does, and every time he tells a code and story. So I am not backing away from Noto. I like the stock. Hey, listen, you can say, you know what, Kramer, you're just soft on Noto. Go check my record. Anthony and I would be the first to agree that that has not now always been the case. All right, listen to me. This beautiful bull market is littered with analyst downgrades. So a lot of times, if you listen to them, the stocks will just end up recovering, but without you. Yes, they could go down, but then they go back up. My advice is don't let them go. Well, man, money tonight, I'm searching for stocks that can bring you a trifecta of good yield, growth, and value. Yeah, I'm kicking off a series with names that meet this mark and revealing the sector where two, top two live. Then, I got a battle of bull versus bear when it comes to one of your favorites, Netflix. If your two analysts drop conflicting reports, I'm taking a close look, giving you my take. And paychecks pop, popped on earnings last week. I'm checking in on the state of small and business employment with the CEO. And also, of course, looking at the stock because it has been a great one. So stay with 
Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.